These are two completely different websites telling from different companies selling completely different products. But what do they both have in common? And that's the fact that they're using the schema.org product schema to actually put some of the product data on the page. So I've gone to view source on this one and you can see that we have in this script tag application LD plus JSON, the content from schema.org type product and exactly the same thing over here even though it's not quite as spaced out as well you'll see that we have the same information so if we go to schema.org here let's paste this in come to this site and we can have a look through and if you read through the docs you'll see that it's basically just a, a way of organizing your data across these things so the, here are the commonly used types the one that we're interested in is the product and it shows you all of the uh, available um, data fun the data points that you can have within this. And if I scroll down to the examples and look at this one, you'll see that we have this application, LD JSON. If we click on JSON LD, you'll see that it is JavaScript object notation for linked data. And it's kind of like a standard that's used for this. It's been around for quite a while. Um, what this basically means is that these sites, we can use one scraping script to actually pull this data from both of these sites because they do this in the same way. Um, it makes our lives easier and I find it's a really good way you can just run this script against product sites and you can just quickly see, hey, does this does this information exist in this URL? And you can then go ahead and save yourself a load of time, which is really handy. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're going to build out a short script that's going to be able to grab this information from this script tag for any site that has it in that we can then pull back. So I've got my uh, new folder open up here. There's nothing in it. So I'm just going to create a new virtual environment. Always use a virtual environment with Python. I think that goes without saying. I'm going to activate that and we're going to install a few different things. So I'm going to be using URL lib3 for this. Now URL lib3 is an HTTP client which is basically used by requests and a whole load of other Python packages to make requests to web servers. And I'm just going to use it by itself in this case for the proxy manager, which I'll show you how that works. We're going to use selecto lax, of course, because this is the only HTML parser I ever use now. Love it. And also going to use rich. So when I print stuff out to my terminal, it's easier to see. You don't need to use that if you don't want to. So let's create a new file. I'm going to call this one uh, main.py. And we are going to try using Helix for this. Helix is very similar to NeoVim. It's written in Rust. It comes with more features out of the box. Um, but it doesn't quite have the same key bindings. So I don't know. We'll see how we get on. If it starts to get in the way, I'll swap back. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import in some stuff. Let's make this nice and big. We'll have URL lib3 from selectolax.parser we'll import in the html parser and then from rich we'll import in print and we're going to import in json as well we will need that because that data that we're going to be pulling out of here we're going to be using json.loads and i'm going to also import in os because um, when I put in my proxy string, I have it saved as an environment variable on my system so I can easily import it into any code that I want. It means I don't have to keep going and getting it and showing it on, on my screen when I'm doing stuff like this. If you want to use proxies, I have a, a link in the description below for, for some proxies that I use. If you want to check that out, that's cool. So we want to create our first function. So let's call this one. Uh, creating a new client. So this is optional. I use this function just to basically give myself a new HTTP client that I can then call and use. I lifted this from when I've been learning Go. It's not necessarily essential, but uh, it makes it nice and neat, I think. So I'm going to call this new client, and we're going to return out of this a URL lib3 dot proxy manager, like so. So let's have some headers. So our headers are going to be equal to a dictionary, of course, and the one main one we want is a user agent. So I'm just going to go ahead back over here and grab my user agent. This one is fine. We'll stick him in there. Put this on one string on one that line, please. Then we'll say that our client is going to be equal to the URL of 3.proxy manager. So in URL lib3, like a session or a client is actually a pool manager or a proxy manager. So if I look at pool manager, you can just about see it at the top there, it's a bit big. Um, but basically, proxy manager is just like a pool manager. This is your session, essentially. So I'm going to do this. Then we're going to put in our um, os.environ 
and then the key, which is my, I think I call it proxy, like so. We also then need to have our headers is equal to headers. I know this is behind my head. You'll see it in just a second, don't worry. Then we can return the client out like this, return client. So uh, one thing I need to install now, actually, is I'm just gonna install black, which is gonna let me format the code. And we'll come back to our Pi file here. So we can now do FMT in Helix because we have black installed and it's just gonna make that a bit neater and tidier. And I'm hiding stuff with my head, you're not missing out on much, it's just as headers is equal to headers. All right, so now we have our, our new client that we can actually uh, run and call. We want to actually get the data from the page. So let's say schema HTML get, and this is gonna take in a client, which is going to be our URL live3.proxyManager. We should use type hints in Python now. And this is also gonna take in a URL, which is a string, and it's gonna return out an HTML parser instance. I'm gonna make this a bit smaller so you can kind of see what I'm doing there. Hopefully it's still big enough to read. Okay, so we will do our response is equal to client.request. Now it works slightly differently, URL lib3, and we'll have our get and then our URL. But what this means is every time we make a request with our client that we're creating in this function, it's always gonna have our proxy attached and it's always gonna have the headers that we want attached to. So I can say that our HTML is gonna be equal to the HTML parser, and we need to give it our response.data. Now we need to decode this data because it's going to be in bytes, I think. So we can say uh, UTF-8 just to encode it as a text. And then we'll return our HTML, which will satisfy the type hint there format. So this one will basically just make the request and return the HTML for us, which is exactly what we want. Now we can pass it. So I'll just say pass HTML, and this is gonna take in the HTML that we got, which is also type of HTML parser. And it's gonna return out of this function. I think it's gonna be a dictionary. Um, we'll leave it like this for the moment. So we want to actually get that uh, element that has the script tags. So let's do our script data is gonna be equal to html.css. Now we wanna do .css because we want to find all of them because on this page there could be multiple uh, uh, script tags that meet this criteria. So we wanna find each and every one so we can go through them. So we'll say it's gonna be a script tag, script, and it's gonna be a type, and we need to put this into uh, brackets. So I'm just gonna grab this here application json not brackets we need to put this into single quotes equals to there we go so it formats it nice and neatly from here what i'm going to do is i'm going to loop through each of these and i'm going to find if it has the at type in because that was the the signifier here you could do at context as well but i'm going to do at type so we'll do for uh, schema we'll call it schema now in script data dot uh, text, and I'm gonna do strip is equal to true. I don't know if this is strictly necessary here, but we'll do it anyway. And we'll do if at type in schema. So this is basically gonna say, if we find this in there, what's this complaining about? Oh, of course, we can't do the, um, excuse me, we can't do this here. If we are search through each of these, and then we want to search within the text here. So strip is equal to strip. There we go. That makes more sense. So if we find this type, this string of at type, which is going to be in every single one of these, what we're going to do is we're going to um, return json.loads, and we'll say our schema.text. Oh, strip is equal to true like so and now we'll still our, our type hint is going to complain here because like we could be returning none because this is returning under an if statement so we have a couple of choices i'm just going to say this is either going to return a dictionary or none just to satisfy this this is shifting the problem along a little bit but you know it'll be fine so we'll finally have a new function that says run we'll call this one run for now and we'll say that our client is going to be equal to the new client function that we created 
our HTML is going to be equal to the schema get HTML with the client and the URL, which I will get in just a second. And then we can say that our uh, data is equal to pass HTML on our HTML and let's print out the data. And then we just need our if name is equal to main. So when we call this directly, it runs the run function. So now we just need our URL. URL is equal to. So let's go and get this one. Nice long one. In fact, let's make, no, we'll just try this first. We'll just do that like this first. Cool. So let's, let's check to see that this actually works. I'm going to format this so it's all done. And then I'm going to come back out here and I'm going to run our main file. Cool. So that's worked. Now we have all of this information, all this formatted, neat, nice data that's come back in the schema.org product format into our code. So now we can actually just go ahead and add in the other URL if we wanted to. So let's grab this, scroll down here, and we'll create a URLs list is equal to this. We'll put this one in here. We'll get the other one as well, which I've just uncut, I've just removed. Sweet. So now we can just do for URL in URLs like this and indent all this stuff in. I'm sure there's a quick way to do this indenting in Helix. I haven't looked it up yet. There we go. Quick format. I like this format. Sweet. So let's save and try again. We should get two lots out, one, two. So this is basically just leveraging the fact that there is structured data in this format within this specific script tag for a lot of different websites that use this. So anywhere that you find this, you can just put this, you can put the URL of the product in and it will match this code here and will give you the actual data back. Now this is a short script. I have one similar to this that I can just call and run against any URLs. So obviously I work in e-commerce. I do a lot of stuff with that. And I can just call that data out and just see what's going on here. There is sometimes there's more data than others. Like you have reviews and offers that doesn't always exist, but quite often it does. So it's all there to be played with. Now from here we have a dictionary in Python that we can do anything with. You could collect you could collect a load of these, use the use pandas to put the dictionary into a spreadsheet or something, or you could pick out certain parts of information that you were after and put it into a database. So it's all about just identifying patterns and seeing what you can use to make your life easier when you're scraping multiple bits of data across multiple different sites. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have like, comment, subscribe, please. It really does help me out. And also jump in the Discord. Uh, we're almost at a thousand members now, which is absolutely insane. Thank you to everyone who's joined. Thank you to all the people that uh, actively contribute. Um, there's loads of you guys now. And uh, yeah, super. Thank you very much. And I'll uh, see you in the next one. Bye.